up in a small town like I'm from, population 44, Hubble, Nebraska, out in the middle of absolute nowhere, 50 miles of dirt road just to get to our back door. Um, it was awesome growing up there. Honestly, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, small town living to me is where it's at. You know, growing up with a, I had a graduating high school class of seven. That's public high school. So when you know everybody, I mean, you know everybody, there's no way to get away with doing anything wrong because somebody's going to find out about it. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Keep, keep always making sure you were doing everything right. <laughs> oh man, so I was doing, I was playing in a lot of bands in high school and um, I had a band called Borderline because we lived on the border of Kansas and Nebraska. And um, we were playing all over the place, getting to open up for the acts that come through, you know, and, and I just got to the point where I was like, hey, I want to try and do this for real. You know, and as soon as I graduated, you know, I, I got a quick degree at, at Milford in, uh, in Lincoln there. And, um, you know, it was just that time. And all the bands I was playing with, I had a worship band going on at one time, I had a country band, and I had a rock band. And it was, I was covering all the ground. So all week long, about from Thursday to Sunday, I was in a different bar or a church or something somewhere, <laughs> playing wherever they'd listen, you know. And um, about a year into that, I asked my, guy, my friends and that were playing in the band, they said, hey man, we can't move to Nashville. We've all got families. I was like, oh, for sure. Nobody wants to go. And one of them, my keyboard player, had already been in Nashville and he came back. And he's like, I ain't going back. So I loaded up everything in my Dodge truck and I went down and I've been there ever since. And I love it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, there was no pushback whatsoever. I, I was very, very surprised because I grew up, you know, my dad and grandpa's the way I live in there. Like, you got to grow up, you got to work hard every day for what you want and get your hands dirty. And I, you know, I still did that, you know, but it was something that was heavy on my heart and I knew that I had to try it for real and I wasn't going to be able to do that unless I really dove into it. And that's what I did. I moved to Nashville and they didn't push back at all. I actually had put on a concert um, about a week before I left and all the people from counties around, all the ladies like quilted quilts and baked goods and baked goods and stuff and they auctioned it off and we raised about 2500 bucks for me and they put it in my pocket and I drove to Nashville. And I've been there ever since, loving every second of it. Absolutely. Well, the new single, Dirty South, came about. I was, um, had a writing session with my good friends Jack Williams and Troy Johnson. Awesome, awesome writers. Great singer in his own right. And um, he said, hey, man, come over to my little farm in, uh, in uh, East Nashville there. And, and we sat there, and I walk up into the uh, writing room, and I never met Jack before. I'd known Troy, so Troy set this, this meeting up, and I'm going back to this little farm, and it looks like I'm going home, you know? And I walk up, and, and we're in this little studio up in this little farmhouse, and my buddy Troy's back there just kind of hanging out. I mean, he's not even opening his eyes to know that I even walked in the door, and he's like strumming this little lick. And I was like, man, that sounds really swampy and backwood sounding and sexy all at the same time. It had that feel about it, you know? And, and Jack kind of just looks over at him, and looks at me, I'm like, man, that's sexy and dirty all at the same time. I was like, Dirty South. Let's write Dirty South. So we sat there and we wrote Dirty South, and it just came out so good. And um, I'm really excited to get everybody out there to listen to it. And thank you guys so much for playing the single. Oh, man, the, re the reaction is really awesome. And the thing that reacts the most is when you start playing it, everybody kind of starts doing that thing out on the dance floor or wherever that in a festival. And they just got this movement. I was playing at uh, a big fair. What's the large fair just down the road from you guys here? I mean, it's like huge. And we were out there in the center giant stage there and everybody was around us. And all these girls were just like mm, mm, doing that. And that's when you know you got something good. When somebody's like swaying back and forth, got their eyes closed. So I'm hoping that it just spreads like wildfire out there. I've gotten to write with some of the most amazing songwriters in Nashville. And I'm, I'm super excited, like Jason Massey and Casey Timmer. My buddy Casey just wrote the, the big number one for uh, Kelsey Ballerini, uh, Yeah Boy. And oh my god, these guys are awesome. And these, some of these guys I've known since I moved to town. And to be able to finally sit down and, and watch how all of our careers are just like so parallel. And we've been there for years, you know. And everybody's kind of getting into their own groove, you know, my buddy Casey and my buddy Andy and all these guys are writing great hits and I'm getting stuff on the radio now and it's just, it's just so cool to be able to do that with your friends and take everybody along for the ride with you, so it's really great. Ah, when I first got to Nashville, some of the biggest struggles were not wanting to just go home because you're, you're there by, by yourself, you're completely alone. And if you're not a go-getter and just a out there trying to meet everybody that you can, you're going to get that lonely feeling, you know, and, and want to jump ship and go back home. And I was probably in Nashville for about a week, and I go up to Opry Mills Mall. I need a new pair of boots. I got holes in the bottom of my boots, you know. I've been walking up and down the sidewalks down there so much. And this guy goes, hey, man, did you move here for, for music? I said, yes, sir. And uh, he goes, well, I'm going to give you a bit of advice. Don't think you're going to come here and make a dime in the music business. He's like, go out and get yourself a good job 
and pay for your music habit until it takes off and, and you're either writing songs or you're playing every day, whatever. And that's exactly what I did. I went down there and I started building houses um, out in like the really rich part of town. Right next door to Alan Jackson's house was the first house I started building when I moved to town. And um, I did. I got a great job and I would work all day long and then I'd go and play at all the bars at night at Tootsie's Legends, The Stage, Crossroads, all of them. And, and that's what kept me there until it all started paying off and I started meeting the right people and getting in the right circles. And that's what it's all about is networking. And if you don't get out and network, you're not going to get anywhere in that town because it's a networking town and it's all built on relationships and who you know, which is a great, great town and it's a great thing because it, it weeds out a lot of people really fast. Well, if I'm going all the way back before I moved to Nashville, so um, it was going to be a commercial airline pilot, if, if you can believe that or not. My dad was in the Air Force and I always had a bug for flying. And that was going to be plan B. Actually, that was plan A at the time. And then I was like, you know, all this music stuff is really taking off, but if there was a plan B, it would be a pilot of some sort, yeah. And that's one of the things that kind of steered me towards Nashville because it wasn't a cheap school to go to. I had already enrolled in the Spartan School of Aeronautics in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I had everything ready to go and I, I get to meet the, I don't know, the director of schools or whatever came to our hometown to, to tell me all about it. And he's like, all right, we got you rolled in, you're ready to go, you passed all your tests. Where's your payment? And I look at him, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, it was a 10 grand of the day that we sign you into the school. I'm like, Buddy, I'm broke as a joke. <laughs> Ain't happening. So I had to rethink all that, and that's, that's when I was like, you know what? That didn't work out. I'm going to go straight to Nashville, and I'm glad I did. Um, I want to be continuing to put out full-length albums these days, and I want to have at least three or four more in five years, so that would be great, and to follow up the series that we're doing now. And I've got lots of aspirations for TV and film and things like that. I've been able to... Uh, do a lot of that stuff already with TV and film, and I would love to continue that. Um, but I love to be touring all over the world, still doing what I'm doing, just uh, at a bigger game. You know, that's where we're trying to take it. Always trying to take it to the bigger level, and um, we're almost there. And we're thank God for people like you that play our music and and keep us on the road and keep us in uh, <laughs> in in with the fans so they can hear everything. And uh, that's what that's what I want to do is be all over the place. I mean, I've got uh, the, the Cabela sponsor. I want to have the TV shows that are going along with it. You know, we're working on that right now with a series called Ho Wild, which I'm super excited about. So if that gets out there, it's music and outdoors and just tons of fun, fun stuff. And that's what I love to do. You know, it's, if I can be making a living doing the things that I love to do every day, like I'm doing now in the next five years, hey, I, I feel like I'm still successful. <laughs> um, Hogue Wild is a, it's a kind of a, a reality-based show on my lifestyle. I've got some friends of mine that are going to be part of it as well, and Casey Timmer, my writing buddy, is one of them, and Jared Wade as well. And um, we go, I travel all over the world right now playing music, so I was like, no, this is ridiculous. We need to send a crew and actually let people see it more than Snapchat, and Facebook, Instagram, and stuff like that. So. Um, it's about the touring, the music, um, the ph philanthropy that we do with all the military, and then also I do these weird, crazy redneck sports that I c have coined the phrase Hickstream events. So there's the Barbie Jeep racing, which a lot of people know about. There's redneck fishing, which is the, in Peoria, Illinois, where the Asian carp are jumping out of the river and you're shooting them with bows and stuff like that. And then just all the hunting excursions that we do. Have you ever heard of flaming tetherball? It's so when you light the tetherball on fire at night and you're just banging it, trying not to burn your eyes out, stuff like that. <laughs> so we've got a lot of stuff like that we want to share with the world. And when I'm overseas, I try and talk to some of the, the locals over there and see what kind of sporting events they do so that we can, you know, show the world what they do in Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, Nigeria, every place. We want to bring the world to the world. That's a good question. I mean, a lot of the cats that are out there are, are friends and peers, obviously. I'm still a songwriter guy at heart. You know, when I, I know that the, the artist is out there singing their songs or co-writes that they've done with, with people, but still, hands down, I, I, just, I grew up on Garth Brooks, man. And to see him back in the limelight again with new music, new shows, and he's still using all of his old cats that were on the, on the road with him. I mean, he's, he's doing it again. I mean, and I've got a song on my project actually called The Power of Garth that was co-written with uh, uh, Matt Rogers and Terry McBride. I mean, Terry McBride wrote a ton of, a ton of hits. So when, to be able to see Garth take such a huge retirement, come back at full force like he never left. I mean, really, he's just as powerful as he was. 
And to be able to see that, I mean, I still can't get enough of Garth. And the crazy story about my Garth Brooks story is um, when I first moved to town, I didn't, I didn't know anybody, so I'm obviously trying to meet tons and tons of people, right? <clears throat> and I get a phone call about three months in, and this guy goes, hey, this is James Garver. And I knew everything about Garth Brooks. And James Garver was Garth's lead guitar player for many, many years. And I was like, I thought it was my brother being a punk, right? So I hung up on the guy because my mom and dad were the only ones that had my phone number. And so, no, he calls back. He's like, no, man, don't hang up. Your brother is laying block with my dad in Kansas City. Said you just moved to town. Let's hang out. Let's go grab dinner. So I, I went and grabbed dinner with James Garver. And uh, we hit it off. And a few months later, um, we decided to start writing songs together. And he wrote Red Strokes and some amazing songs for Garth. So I'm like, holy cow, this guy actually wants to write with me, you know? And I'm only in town three months. So we sit down and write a few songs. We got about three, four songs in. And um, he goes, hey, man, let's go in the studio and just record these and let's demo them out, you know? So I go in the studio and it's Garth's entire band. It's Dave Palmer on drums and Steve, I think it's Steve on the keys and the fiddle. I mean, all, everybody. Everybody's right there. And I'm like, holy cow, I'm playing with Garth's entire band. And I've only been town for maybe six months. I'm like, this is going to be easy. <laughs> no, not easy at all. <laughs> but it was cool. You know, I felt very, very honored. And, and uh, I will still love those songs today. And to be able to write with guys like him and play with uh, guys like that, I mean, it's just insane.